Hi, I'm Mark, and this is What's Brewing. Today, I'm sitting down with President and CEO of Lafayette Travel, Ben Berthelot, for part one of his interview. But before we get into it, let's go ahead and roll that beautiful B-roll. Ben, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Awesome, uh, for everyone at home that I'm not familiar with who you are, can you go ahead and tell them, tell them who you are and what do you do here? Sure, Ben Berthelot, President and CEO of the Lafayette Convention and Visitors Commission. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to have you on What's Brewing, it really is. It's an honor to be on, I've been following you guys for a couple months here and love the work that you're doing. Thank you, we, we really appreciate that. So, my thing is I kinda wanna learn about the journey. Okay. How did you get to be the president of Lafayette Visitors Commission? It's a good question. I'm, I'm from Lafayette. I went to school here at Fatima, St. Thomas More. I went to college at UL and uh, majored in public relations. And right out of college, I didn't have a job at the time, but I was coaching basketball at Fatima, which I still do now 27 years later. And I was fortunate at the end of our year party, I had a, one of the parents ask me, what are you doing? And I said, I'm looking for a job. Well, he just happened to be number two at Lafayette Coca-Cola. He said, well, come see me on on Monday, I may have something for you. So I went to see them on that on that Monday and they offered me a job as a business analyst, which that's right when technology was picking up email. I had got my first email and they they really didn't anticipate that's the job that I would stay in for long. So a year later, they moved me to what's called a youth market manager. And through that, we did a lot of PR opportunities, sponsorships, donations, did a lot of work in the schools. And I really enjoyed that, did that for four years. And when Joey Durrell was running for city parish president, he approached me about becoming his campaign manager. And he said, if, if I win, you got a job. And if I lose, well, you're on your own. At the time I was young and single. So I said, I'm, I'm gonna do this. So I quit my job at Coke to be his campaign manager. He won, I did that for six years uh, as his assistant, which I learned a lot uh, about local government, obviously, and a lot about a lot of different things. And after six years, an opening, came in the community development department. So I spent two years as the director of community development. And in that position in community development, we work very closely with the arts and cultural scene uh, on a daily basis. And so Gerald Bro, my predecessor, when he announced his retirement, he actually approached me and said, you would be good at this, you ought to think about it. And I had never thought about it, but I threw my name into the hat uh, along with 25 others. And I was very fortunate that the board of directors uh, offered me the job now 10 years ago. And so I've loved every minute of it. It really is a great opportunity to use my degree uh, in public relations, my experience in government, and the opportunity to really sell this area that I love and have lived in for all my life is a, it's a blessing. That's amazing. That's an amazing journey. Yeah, it's been, it's been fun. <laughs> from a, from a, from a, a, a sports game, it's like running to somebody at a sports game to all the way to now you're you're in charge of, of getting people here to really see what the beauty of what we have around here. No question. They always talk about the forks, the forks in, in the road in your life. And I've been fortunate that I've had several and, and I've taken the right the right fork, fortunately, and uh, to end up here and loving what I do every day. My mom always said, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And that's kind of how I feel. The opportunity to promote our area on a daily basis really doesn't, doesn't feel like work. So, so within that, with let's say <clears throat> you know, getting the opportunity and being able to sit in for a while, what are some of the things that really draw you into the arts and culture that you wish people would understand about Lafayette and Lafayette Parish? We overuse the term unique, I think, in our industry and in a lot of different industries, but we truly do have a unique culture. It's, it's something that uh, if people have an experience, they, they recognize immediately. And the great thing about our area is not only do we have that great culture, but you don't have to go to a museum to learn about it. It's you, you have the opportunity to become immersed in our culture. And I think that's one of the things that sets us apart, whether that's a, a festival or a live music event or the food. Every time you come here, you can become immersed in, in the culture. And I think that helps to set us apart from, from other destinations around the, around the country and around the world. I have to agree. I, I know it was sometime in the, the 2010s, I can't believe we called it the 2010s now. Right. The 2010s, we got uh, Lafayette got chosen as a tastiest city in America. Right. And like a lot of people, like when they think food, they think New Orleans. Right. And New Orleans is a big, um, love New Orleans, nothing against New Orleans, but you know, New Orleans is a big tourist trap. Right. But like, if you really want good food, you come to Lafayette. No question. I'm glad you mentioned that. We were named the tastiest town in the South by Southern Living Magazine, the best food city in the United States by USA Today in Rand McNally. 
the happiest city in America by the Wall Street Journal, one of the best number two college towns in America. So all those things are very important in terms of recognition. And New Orleans is a wonderful city, as you mentioned. And the challenge we have uh, across Louisiana is a lot of people think New Orleans is a state. And so it, it's, <laughs> and it's getting people to realize that there's more to Louisiana than New Orleans. And I truly think from an authentic experience that we have uh, the most to offer out other than, other than any, for anybody else in the state. No, 100% agree, 100% agree. It's like, and, and there's things about the city that probably, probably people just outside of it don't realize. It's like, we have a college. It's a literally smack dab in the middle that's integrated into the center of the city. And that college spreads out almost like a, a, a roots of a tree. Yes. Like, a, like a, because we were down here, we have a whole bunch of live oaks. It's like a live oak. Yeah. It just spreads out everywhere because it's ingrained in our culture. You know, on Fridays, I don't know a single person that doesn't wear red. Right. <laughs> you know, that's a great analogy. And a lot of people don't appreciate necessarily the not only the economic impact of having a university, is, but as you mentioned, that, that 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 tree branches out with the employees that come out of out of that university from a workforce standpoint and just a sense of pride, I think that you feel uh, when you support your university that, that we have. And I think we're a very proud area in general, but certainly having that university is something that we can be proud of uh, on a daily basis helps. No, it does. I, and I feel it's because it, it brings people from all over the all over the state come in to do that. And so let me, let me circle back around a little bit back to the food here. Um, what, what are some aspects that people might not understand about our food culture here in Lafayette, Louisiana? Well, with such a wide variety, and I'm just going to use Buddha as an example. Well, uh, that's something that we all maybe take for granted, but when people come here, that they're really intrigued by that. And we, we started a Cajun Boudin Trail where we highlight all the different uh, entities that, that serve Boudin. Of course, you got gumbo. Uh, our gumbo is different from a, a New Orleans gumbo, so people are intrigued by that. But one of, one of my favorite sayings is something one of our former lieutenant governors would say is that here, here in Louisiana, we don't have seasons like everybody else of fall, spring, winter, and summer, we have seasons of food. Crawfish season, crab season, shrimp season, gumbo season. And it's really true. <laughs> and I think people are intrigued by that uh, when they come here. Just a, we, we had a group in town this week uh, from out of state. And of course, they wanted to try gumbo. And so that's a similar story that gets told time and time again as people come here. And fortunately, we have a lot of opportunities for people to experience food that they either have never tried or they may have tried it thinking they were getting the real thing and they realized when they hear that it wasn't the real thing that it's like, they this needed. is what it is this is what it is exactly <laughs> well uh i'll say ben i'm loving what we're talking about can we do a part two sure awesome Absolutely. because now i'm hungry and yeah. i need to grab lunch <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> but uh thank you very much for sitting with us for day. Absolutely. Um, and that's going to do it for us here over at What's Brewing. If you like what you see here, don't forget to hit that like button, crush that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get all the updates for future videos coming out. But until the next one, have a good one.